everyone from, Pen uh, from Pennsylvania. Don't know where you are, but we're in Pennsylvania. My name is Christine, and I work for a company called Human Services. Today, I wanted to talk about uh, common ground and the IDD population. We serve uh, quite a large population with the IDD. We have a med clinic geared towards these individuals. And our first site that we open common ground in is where that med clinic is. So recently, I've been asked this question is, why did you give common ground a shot with the IDD population? Now, I had a knee-jerk reaction because my response was, well, why wouldn't we give the IDD population an opportunity to use common ground? Um, it didn't make sense to me that, that we would leave them out. Um, so for those of you who know me, you could tell other people that my heart is all about recovery, spreading the recovery model and journeying with someone in their recovery regardless of what difficulties they have. So for me, it just made absolute sense that when we were going to start the program, um, we would let everyone do it. Can Next you say what IDD stands for? Oh yeah, it, it stands for Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities. And thank you, because I'm going to use that term a lot. <laughs> so, next slide, if you would. Thanks. So what are, were our barriers? Uh, sometimes the needs of these individuals, well, they had different needs. Um, so we did have some barriers. But in particular, the biggest barrier were the staff working with individuals. Doctors, case managers, housing staff, they all had a reason why their person could not use common ground. So the biggest challenge I faced as a supervisor was helping the DSD staff feel confident enough to challenge that way of thinking. Um, and when they needed support, I was definitely right there with them, and I continue to be right there with them because there are different battles that need to be fought um, when trying to maybe push this through. So, for example, during training and implementation, we spoke about the fact that using common ground is all about the person's recovery. I hammered this message because it's not about whether we think a person could or couldn't do something, and it wasn't our job to make that judgment or to set limitations. Um, so I told the staff that I was working with that it was our job to give the individual the support and skills that he or she needed in order to be successful. Um, now, I loved this picture on this on this slide because um, if you notice, you have some people and they're kind of the, like bullying um, that, that poor individual there. Um, and the reason why I love it is because in essence, this is kind of what happens in the mental health field when we don't let people have the opportunity to, to set their own um, limits and see what they can do. And so even though we might think, well, maybe someone's nonverbal and they don't really understand, I believe that they understand more than we give them credit for and that they can feel just like this girl in this cartoon. So um, apart from the staff, we needed to adapt in some ways. Uh, that was a barrier. And also the individuals themselves were nervous uh, for different reasons. Some of them needed to learn how to use the computer. Um, and so we're going to get to that on in a couple slides. But if you could go to the next slide, please. Um, so this is a quote that was shared with me, and I, it's a Pat Deegan quote, which is wonderful. It says, if we plant a seed in a desert and it fails to grow, do we ask what is wrong with the seed? No. We look at the environment around the seed and to ask what must change in this environment such that the seed can grow. We need to stop saying what's wrong with the psychiatric survivors and start asking how do we create hope-filled humanized environments and relationships in which people can grow. Um, and I love, love, love this quote because this is so very true with looking at a seed. Um, if, if you're trying to plant something new, you're going to try and do everything you can to help encourage that seed to grow. I'm sure farmers do this and we need to do this. So as an agency, human services needed to make some adaptations. Um, and if you could put up the next slide. 
we'll talk about what we did. So how we adapted, well, everyone was encouraged and welcomed into the DSC, including individuals who were mostly nonverbal or all nonverbal. We didn't judge or say, well, they just can't do it. Um, and in fact, we fought to have them at least come in to try it once. Um, and then something that, a couple points that aren't on the slide I'm going to talk about as well. The staff set the person at ease and said that he or she would use the computer with them until they were comfortable. Um, and if the person wanted to, they would read the, the slides or, or uh, the program to the individuals. Now this is, I didn't put it on the slide because that's what we're supposed to be doing anyway, so it really shouldn't be different with individuals who have intellectual and developmental disabilities. Then as a team, we focused on small successes instead of what the person couldn't do. So for example, uh, at the beginning, if a person was nervous uh, or was acting like they maybe had some anxiety, we just tried to have them come in for like five minutes, um, and then we built that up over time. Once they got used to uh, the, the amazing staff that we have here, then they were more likely to come back and, and stay for maybe seven minutes. Um, but the key is, is that we allowed them to progress at their own pace. So, um, and we did that also with the program. We had to put aside our own expectations and timelines and let the person go at their own pace. So sometimes as workers, that's hard because we have what we think needs to get done, but we tried to focus on encouraging what they did do instead of what they didn't do. Also, um, the, the coordinators and the peers really took time and continue to take time to clarify language. So they want to make sure that that's not a stumbling block for the individuals. Um, and so even words that maybe we think they would know, they wanted to clarify to make sure that they would know. Um, and then just checking for understanding for when they read the questions or if they watched a video, they would say, you know, how do you feel about um, something in order to help the person to be able to speak up if they, if they did need help clarifying things. One of the things I really want to just give kudos to the team at large for is this next step. Case managers, as well as the DSC staff, as well as myself, had to talk with the housing staff because a lot of individuals who have uh, MR come with housing support staff, and they were nervous. And so sometimes they would say, well, no, they can't go in there because it's not approved by um, the, the, the team at the house. And so we would have to call the house team and say, this is what the program is. You're more than welcome to come in and look at it. It's part of the way we do business now um, in order to help them be set at ease. And then um, we had hard conversations with the doctors. Um, and to be honest, I'm still having hard conversations with the doctors, but that's okay because I'm willing to fight that fight. It's important to have a champion on your team who's willing to, to have those conversations, to say to the doctors that these individuals can speak up for themselves, um, that they have a right to go in there. Um, and so, you know, over time it's getting better, um, but that's something that just comes with the territory. And then, of course, as time went on, a bond was created between the peer staff and the clients, and it, it's grown very strong. And so now a lot of our individuals love to go into the DSC and see their friends, to see um, the videos. Um, so next slide, please. What has happened? Well, these are huge successes. First, th this population has expressed that they feel listened to. That's huge for them to express that and the fact that they feel listened to and a lot of them have said this is the first time that they feel listened to when it comes to their mental health recovery. Um, staff have observed that they are more aware of their emotions. Um, they use their personal medicine on a regular basis and that's helping them in a lot of different areas. We have seen, and this is huge, we have seen a correlation between um, them using common ground and a decline in what I like to call previous behaviors. So on Fridays, we have our 
IDD med clinic, and in the past, um, when you were in our building, you would hear hollering, screaming, people uncomfortable, um, and it was, for other programs, it was kind of unnerving to hear this every Friday. Um, well, it's, it's almost stopped. I mean, Fridays, we, my, some of my um, psych rehab members thought that the med clinic had ended because they hadn't heard people making those noises in a really long time. And I think, I really believe the, the only thing that's changed is that we've brought common ground to our site. Nothing else has changed. Um, so we do encourage even individuals who are nonverbal to watch videos. We've seen that this helps them to relax while they're waiting to see the doctor. Um, you know, we're, we're not 100% sure how else it's happening or how else it's helping them yet because we're working on trying to figure out a good communication system. But I know it's helping because their behaviors are decreasing. So also the individuals feel like they have a voice. They speak up for themselves more in the med checks. Um, and, and they like the reports because it's right there concretely so they could say to the doc, well, wait, you know, look at my report. Um, many of them now use the computer totally on their own. They didn't know how to use the computer before and now they're doing it on their own. Um, and the most important thing is that they feel more in control of their recovery, um, which is huge. So I think just one more slide. Yes, and I like this too. I found this on the web, but just a couple success stories. We had a gentleman who has um, Asperger's and he was brought in because he was having a lot of anxiety and um, a lot of anger. And so he went to our DSC coordinator and they introduced him to personal medicine cards. I'm not sure how he was missed because we've been doing personal medicine for a while, but he hadn't been introduced to them. And so the, the, the DSC staff pulled out some cards on anger management, on some anxiety, and sent him on his way. Well, at his very next med check, this gentleman had gone home and something about how concrete they were, he was able to look at the personal medicine cards and write on the back side how they relate to him. He did this with a stack of personal medicine cards, so when he came back, he had his own personalized cards. No, no one thought he would be able to do this, but not only did he make his own cards, but he was using his own cards on a regular basis, and he said how much they helped, and so they went back in and looked up more personal medicine cards. And then also just where we're headed as an agency, it's really important to us that we can continue to expand what we're doing uh, with individuals with autism and even with individuals who are nonverbal. So, what we're trying to do is use some of the tools from the, um, the IDD world and the autistic world and bring them into common ground So, it, it, when we use common ground. So some of the things we're trying to do is use, uh, we're going to be creating communication pictures um, that will be specific for our DSC locations, and that way they'll get used to coming in and seeing uh, the pictures and how to um, be, then they'd be able to point to how they're feeling in the picture, um, to, just to try and open up some other areas of communication. So we're very excited about that. I'm excited to see how that even moves us further in helping this population. Um, and that's all I have, so thank you very much. Thank you so much, Christine. Wonderful. You know, I... I um, that's one of my favorite quotes from Pat, too, and I think it's a really, really good reminder for everyone out there listening that um, we as staff, um, as workers in the DSC, should never be taking away or making choices for people. The whole point of what we're doing and the point of recovery during care is helping people find their voice um, and helping people learn what they can do for themselves. And if you don't give people a chance, um, then you're taking that away from them. Um, so it's tremendous work that you all are doing there in human services. Um, thank you so much. Does anyone have any questions for Christine? 